Hey guys, Arkin Templar here with another one of my brief political histories. So today we're going to be looking at Poland in the um, post uh, Cold War era. So Poland was controlled like most Eastern European countries by the um, by a communist party. Uh, they all had kind of different names, but they were all kind of similar. Um, in this case, it was the Polish United Workers Party, which was led by Bill Murray. Yes, Bill Murray. I don't know, he just always kind of looks like him. Like, oh, look at this grainy, crappy picture with, like, the, the sunglasses. What a tool. Anyways, so, um, Poland was the, um, I believe the first Eastern, or one of the first Eastern Bloc countries to break with the Soviet Union, due largely to Lech Walesa <clears throat> and the Solidarity Movement. Um, the Solidarity um, Citizens Committee... Uh, was the largest trade union in Poland. I think it still is the largest trade union in Poland, uh, but eventually became a political party. And when the communists kind of realized that they could no longer hold on to power, um, they legalized Solidarity as a party and ran against it. Um, let's see here. So um, basically the election... It's not that important, but the communists were still rigging this election, but things had really changed. Uh, prior to then, we only had two political parties. The United People's Party, which um, eventually became um, the... It, it, it will become a different party that we'll look at later, which is kind of like a kind of right-wing agrarian conservative peasant party. Um, and they were allowed to run, but they were given about 25% uh, of the seats, and the remainder went to the... Uh, to the communists. Um, so the election of 1989 changed that was Sol Solidarity, which was basically a um, just a movement mainly of working class Poles who were against communism founded by Lech Walesa. Now in contrast to what it, it, you may think it means, it doesn't mean solidarity in the left wing sense. It means solidarity is in a Catholic sense. Um, I think the th I'm trying to remember what are the three principles of Catholic social teaching? Solidarity um subsidiarity and one other one but solidarity is a term from catholic social teaching it's not from communism so solidarity was overwhelmingly uh pretty right wing i mean it was certainly socially right wing probably the economics were a lot more mixed as we'll see when we look at the various movements that grow out of solidarity but no solidarity was was um was a right wing political movement so we had that election, now we have the first election in post-communist Poland, uh, which is won by the Democratic Union, which is basically a center-to-center-right uh, liberal Christian party. Uh, it will eventually evolve into one of the two main political parties in Poland. Uh, Poland is interesting, and why I'm doing it is not only because there is a, yeah, Polish People's Party. Um, that was um, a reformed version of the party that um, they allowed to run during the... Um, communist era and they win um a huge number of seats in regional assemblies because they're kind of like an agrarian um they're an agrarian uh, a guy i know from poland described them as a peasants party that offered nothing to the general public not that there's really anything um wrong with that if anything it's kind of refreshing so we had a number of different parties um the communist party ceased to exist and it became the social the democratic left alliance it's important to keep in mind, though, that the left only got 25% um, in the next election. They came in second place, but Poland is interesting because so little there's so little support for the left in Poland. Uh, Poland is electorally one of the most right-wing countries on earth. Um, the left, particularly after the 90s, has virtually no impact on elections there. There's two right-wing parties that run against each other. I'm not going into too much detail as to the parties because I want to, because Poland goes through a lot of different parties, and they kind of reconsolidate, etc. So then we have the Polish pres uh, parliamentary election of um, 1993, which the left it's one of the only elections that um, the left manages to win. Even then, though, um, they had to form a coalition with a socially conservative agrarian party to govern. Um, so the left didn't even win. The left got 20% of the vote. Then we have kind of um, a, a collection of different right-wing 
um, and moderate left-wing parties. But overall, even um, even in one of the two elections, the left won. They only got 20% of the vote. It, it's very small. Then we have the election of 1997, which is um, the right managed to regain power. Granted, it was the center-right, um, which would eventually become a variety of different parties. Once again, I'm not going into too much detail about any of these, because these are all, like, parties that just showed up and then disappeared and merged and remerged. Once we get into kind of modern pol Polish politics, I'll talk a bit more about the different parties. So, yeah, notice the uh, the left uh, got about 27%, largely because the other left-wing parties lost votes, votes or ceased to exist. The left almost never gets above 25% um, in Polish elections and frequently gets less. So 2001 is the last time the left would really get any real um, uh, victory. Um, basically what happened from my understanding is a lot of the existing right-wing parties collapsed, merged, demerged, and remerged. And in the, um, the chaos, the left was able to win an actual um, coalition because they were united at a time of great political upheaval. Which gives us the um, Democratic Left Alliance, which is the <coughs> main left-wing party in Poland uh, that gets roughly 10% of the vote. And they're, they're really the only remaining left-wing party in Poland. Uh, they collapsed in the subsequent election and haven't gotten within anywhere near power since. So then we are heading into modern Polish politics, which is dominated by um, a multiple party system. The two main parties, and these kind of represent the two wings that made up Solidarity, are the Law and Justice Party and the um, Civic Platform. Now, Law and Justice is interesting because they are actually kind of a third position party. Um, <clears throat> look at how LARPy that is. That's awesome. So they are a right-wing party, not just center-right, but right-wing party. And their politics are national clericalism or Catholic nationalism, uh, Euroscepticism, populism, social conservatism, and Polish nationalism. Um, so they are a deeply socially conservative, deeply religious party um, that represent um, the people who are um, more economically um, uh, centrist, maybe kind of economically left-wing, more kind of like a economic populist party. I guess it's a bit similar to fascism, although that's not really fair to them because they aren't really radical. It's a bit more like um, Fidesz or United Russia or something like that. So social conservatism, law and order, populism, uh, let's see, political support. Uh, law and justice originated from the secular... Um, okay, yeah, so civic platform, which is the other party we'll look at, and law and justice both um, came down to... Um, So yeah, so as I said, we had a number of merges and demerges post. Um, during the 1997 election, we had Solidarity briefly reform from its component parts uh, to prevent the left from gaining power. Um, so the conservative, uh, more right-winged act of the um, more Eurosceptic part who felt that economic liberalization and modernization had not really um, brought about the utopia and promises that um, it had been granted uh, founded the civic platform sorry law and justice party so they're kind of the more nationalist more populist more disenfranchised more socially conservative half of solidarity that's not to say that um, civic platform is not right wing because it is um, and then we have civic platform which is the other party and it is also right wing although much closer to the center so it's a liberal conservative uh, Christian Democratic and Liberal Political Party. <coughs> so it's more of a, um, let's see here, does it state, ideology. Civic Platform combines ordo-liberal ordo stances on the economy, so classical liberal policies, uh, with social conservative stances on social and ethical issues, including opposition to ab ab 
opposition to abortion, same-sex marriage, soft drug decriminalization, euthanasia, stem cell research, removal of crosses in other religious schools and public places, and wardability of in vitro fertilization. Um, also supports religious education in schools. Um, so this is the, um, the more left-wing party of the two main parties. Uh, that is substantially to the right of the Republican Party. So really the main difference between them is law and justice is a bit more nationalistic and less pro-EU. Yeah, because they're pro-EU. And law and justice is mildly anti-EU. So law and justice is more nationalistic in all meanings. So um, more skeptical of the free market, more kind of anti-trade, more um, skeptical of the EU. Whereas law and justice is a, sorry, civic platform is more liberal, more pro-EU. It is a bit closer to the political center, although those, um, the center-right issues of it are a lot, sorry, the social issues for civic platform are far to the right of most right-wing parties in the rest of the world, um, particularly in most Western countries. So take that for what you will. Then we had the election of 2007, which um, saw the elimination of virtually all parties except for the four main ones where we have Civic Platform, which is once again a socially conservative classical liberal party, um, Law and Justice, which is a national conservative party. Um, the left has been reduced to 13% of the vote and ceases to really have any influence on society whatsoever, has basically collapsed. And then we still have the uh, Polish People's Party, which is another socially conservative party. So we have three socially conservative parties, whereas most Western countries don't have one viable one. We have three in Poland, all of which are to some extent bigger than the or similar in size to the left. Then we have the Polish parliamentary election of 2011. Who's RP? Oh, okay, so they're, they're a dildo party. Okay, so we did have a second left-wing party come out, um, but the funny thing about them is they took... Um, last time we saw the left get like 15% of the vote, and this time if you combine the two left-wing parties, they got, um, about the amount of vote that the previous party did. So they really didn't pick up any votes. They picked up like maybe 1 or 2%. But as you can see, it's still very much Eastern Poland just votes solidly for law and justice, and Western Poland votes, um, entirely for civic platform. <clears throat> so, Yeah. Uh, then we're heading into the Polish election of 2015, which is why I did this preview. Also, I just like talking about politics in Poland, because it's nice to see a country where things actually kind of function. So here are the parties. So um, these are the polls so far. Uh, we have Civic Platform at 27% of the vote. Very respectable. Um, Law and Justice, which is probably a lot closer to my ideology. Although Civic Platform still... If we had those guys instead of the Republicans, that would be a massive, or in my case, the Conservatives, that would be a massive improvement. Um, so we have both parties, which I both like, are at about 65%. My math is bad. I don't know. They're, they're at a large number of the votes. Then we have the Polish Peasants Party, which also seem okay to me. Um, a combination of the two left-wing parties in Poland has 5%. The left may only get 5% of the vote. Let's see, who's this This Kirk, Kirkus movement? Um, okay. It's, um, it's, it's, it's some just random protest party, so I can't classify that. Uh, that, that is a center-right party. Oh no, that's social liberal, so that's social dildo. Um, NPL? Okay, so the left might get 9% of the vote. Okay. And then we got this LARPy stuff. Coalition for the Renewal of the Republic, Freedom, and Hope. That's like the LARPiest name ever. And that's founded by Corwin, who's kind of like... Oh, I have to do a video on Corwin. Corwin is like... Um, he's kind of like the edge lord of Poland. He's like a really socially conservative libertarian who says really edgy stuff about like homosexuality and stuff like that. 
So he's he's pretty awesome. So he leads the Corwin movement, um, also known as the Congress of the New Right, named after himself. So he's a pretty cool guy. Um, so his his movement, which has the larpiest title ever, Coalition for the Renewal of the Republic Freedom and Home. So my point is, that, what, what does this all mean? My point is the left gets, if you add all the left wing and center left and far left parties combined, Poland gets, uh, in Poland, they get maybe 9 to 10 percent of the vote. That's it. 90 percent of the vote in Poland goes for left, for right wing parties. And these aren't just like lame um, center right parties, although civic platform technically is. By the standards of like any other Western country, these parties are like extremely right wing on social issues. Uh, there, there's no social dildoism going down in Poland. Maybe they're starting to try and put some in, but electorally it has no impact on society. Um, I don't know. Maybe this Cookies 15 thing is is like, maybe this is left wing, but because I can't really classify this, it looks to me like only less than 10% of Poland is going to vote for a left wing party this time. Um, so this is, this is very interesting. Um... I don't know, the polls don't lie. It really looks to me like um, uh, the Law and Justice Party is just going to win the election and that they will, um, yeah, that they will become the new governing party of Poland. So fingers crossed. I do like them. Uh, they're, they're, both of them are pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the thing. This is Argent Templar, signing out.